Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we'll discuss the origin of our own order of mammals, the primates, and learn about the traits that distinguish primates from other mammals and the major groups of archaic primates. In 1965, small mammal teeth were discovered in Montana at the cusp of the beginning of the Cenozoic air in sediments that lay just above the KT boundary, which represented the last appearance of dinosaurs. Now these tiny teeth had features in particular in the molars to indicate an affinity to later primates. The animal was named Purgatorius, and although only isolated teeth and ankle bones have been found of the genus, it is believed to be the oldest archaic primate. During the Paleocene epoch following the extinction of the dinosaurs, mammals began to exploit the trees as a habitat. Of these mammal survivors, the archaic primates were one of the first to become fully arboreal and fe fed on nuts and seeds and fruit that the trees offered and which had grown back from the mass destruction of the meteorite impact that had killed off the dinosaurs. They were not the first mammals to live in the trees. During the Cretaceous, multituberculate mammals lived in the trees and had developed specialized teeth to open hard nuts as well. But these new archaic primates in the Paleocene were placental mammals, which meant that they did not have to tend to nests of eggs. While they only had one or two offspring at a time, they showed greater parental care in those fewer offspring and a greater rate of success in their reproduction. The early members likely looked like tree shrews, which live in the dense forests of southeastern Asia and belong to the order Scanodentia. Living tree shrews have a omnivore diet and can switch between insects and small invertebrates, as well as fruit as part of their diet. A flexible omnivore diet likely characterized many of the Paleocene archaic primates, and others became specialized to feeding on leaves and fruit and nuts. Teeth of some of the archaic primates from the Paleocene also resemble living Dromoptera, or the Kulugu, which is a gliding tree-living mammal from the forests of southeastern Asia. Fossils from the Paleocene of Montana and Wyoming, such as Planotherium and other members of the Plagiomyid and Myxodectidae, appear to be early members of this group and were widespread during the Paleocene, although complete skeletons of Paleocene fossils are unknown. The most common group of archaic primates from the Paleocene belong to the paraphyletic grouping called the Plesiodapiformes, which includes the early member Purgatorius, as well as a number of families that we'll discuss here. The four families um, are called the Microomomyid, the Microsiopsid, and the Paraomomyid, and the Plesiodapidae. These four families are united by some derived traits principally in their incisors, which project forward, with the top incisors having a mitten-shaped tooth in which the lower incisor fits into. These large incisors likely enabled these primates to pry open hard-shelled nuts like walnuts. The Ice Age animated movies uh, featuring Scratch, which might be a cartoon version of a plesiodapid, I don't know. The best known fossil is Plesiadipus. It's a common genus known from skeletons in North America and in Europe, especially in the late Paleocene. Although it went extinct at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary in North America, and there are a few that made it into the Eocene in Europe. The skeleton features claws on each of the digits. It kind of looked like a squirrel. One of the best skeletons of Paraomomyids uh, is Ignatius, which is um, from the late Paleocene of North America. It had claws um, on kind of elongated digits, digits that somewhat resemble a modern pygmy marmoset. They were really small arboreal mammals with narrow tweezer-like incisors. 
Several other archaic primate uh, families from the Paleocene may be um, in close relationship to true primates. And these include the mysterious Picardontidae, which are only known from teeth uh, that indicate that they had a specialized diet eating fruit. And the better known Carpolestidae, which had many extra little cusps on their molar teeth and a weird enlarged lower fourth premolar. The hands and feet feature opposable thumbs and big toes, uh, which also feature a nail, while the rest of the fingers and toes exhibited claws. This allowed these archaic primates to grip the limbs and branches as they moved around on trees. The first true primates, or members of the clade Euprimates, appear right at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary. While many of the archaic primates went extinct at the boundary, the Microsiopidae and the Paraumomyid uh, survived into the early Eocene, but are extinct by the middle to late Eocene. Euprimates are characterized by a number of derived traits, including a postorbital bar which enclose the eye socket or orbit. The skull also shows a broader snout and forward orientation of the eyes, which allowed animals to see stereoscopically. Euprimates lacked these specialized incisors and had a basic tribosphenic tooth pattern. The auditory bola that holds the inner ear is ossified with the petrosal part of the temporal bone. The last characteristic is that the euprimates had nails on all their toes and fingers and opposable thumbs or halixes. Early Eocene true primates like Cantius from North America shows evidence of sexual dimorphism in the size of their canines. Several of the earliest euprimates at the very base of the Eocene include Cantius, Telehardinia, and the recently discovered Archaeocebus from Asia. Each one of these fossils belongs to a unique group indicating that euprimates split into three major groups at the base of the Eocene. Now, no one knows for sure where euprimates originated from. Most of the archaic primates with their strange projecting incisors are too derived to have given rise to this group. And the appearance of euprimates is just very sudden near the Paleocene-Eocene boundary, indicating a widespread geographic repopulation of the arboreal mammals following the PETM global warming event that occurred at the end of the Paleocene. Some researchers have hypothesized that they arrived from the Indian subcontinent, having recently reached Asia, but little is known of the Paleocene and early Eocene of Africa, and molecular similarity between rodents and rabbits, as well as modern southeastern Asian mammals like tree shrews and colugos with primates, suggests an Asian origin for the entire group. All right, you should now know the traits that distinguish you primates from other mammals, and the major features and groups of archaic primates that lived in the Paleocene. In the next video, we'll look at the fossil Eocene U primates and the three major groups that arose after the Paleocene, as well as a way to group these three groups into the Strepsirrhini and Haplorhini primate groups. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University Geology Program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin.berger.org. Links are found in the description below.